Hey Dreamers, I'm Joe Pardo, and today I'm talking with rapper South Jersey native Rich Quick. Yeah, <laughs> we out here. Who is uh, making his dreams come true still uh, by, by well, putting out a new album very, very soon. Yes, September 28th, The Everywhere Man Drops on Soul Spasm. Really excited to, to release that project. Um, really excited to still... Uh, bring to y'all new singles and 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 videos and new music. Uh, there's so much more to come in the future. I'm terribly excited about it. <laughs> and not only the new album, but you just got back from from Europe, touring around uh, yeah. and and playing everywhere. Yeah, that was that was awesome. Like definitely a life a life changing experience for me. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm floating on a cloud right now, man. I can't, I can't. Uh, <laughs> I don't even think I could be happier. Well, that makes two of us, man, for sure, for sure. Um, the dreamer cloud, yeah. the dreamers. <laughs> uh, so, what, uh, what what cities were you in 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 Europe? Um, so I was mainly I was mainly my tour was mainly a UK tour. So I mainly toured the the uh, the UK, and we passed by uh, some some sp- a, a lot of spots that I've never heard of in my life. A lot of cities that. I've never even heard of uh, in the UK, but it was it was so crazy because from from city to city that you go. So first off, it's a lot of big cities there. I didn't I didn't realize that. Like you hear about London, you know what I mean, or Manchester, but you don't hear about like other other cities like Birmingham. It's like huge cities. Oh, I didn't and, realize uh, it was that big. I mean, I, I've heard of it, but I didn't realize yeah, it was big. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, it's like. You know, and and like Liverpool, I didn't realize that Liverpool was a big. It's like a New York City style city. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Huh. Well, I was not aware of that. I, I've never been to uh, London yet, or or England in general. But it's it's uh it's in the cards. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting place to visit. It's kind of you know, it's like here in the sense that they speak English, <laughs> but uh, it's everything. Uh, Everything, my experience in Europe is everything is the same as in you're on the same planet, except for everything is just slightly different than it is here. Like everything, you, you, you know, you, even to use a soda machine over there, you got to stop for a second and be like, how is this working? You know what I mean? <laughs> Which when you're in an English speaking country is cool because things are in English and you can read them. Right, right, right. When you're someplace else, that could be a little problem. So, what what countries did you go through? I only I only went to the uh, UK and the Netherlands, and uh, like Amsterdam, and uh, and that was where uh, everything was was primarily in Dutch, and I don't speak Dutch, and uh, I always I heard it like before I went over there, you know, people were telling me like, oh, you know, everyone speaks English. It, w- it won't be that big of a deal. Well, it's like, yeah, everyone does speak English. They don't always want to speak English, especially not to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, my experience was if you went into a store, they spoke English because that's, right, you know, they want right. to sell you stuff uh-huh. or you, you want you to buy stuff. So, Right, but I, I found I found even even in a store, there was, uh, there was a, a situation. We had a situation where we had really bad uh, acid reflux, heartburn. And, uh, oh, we as in the whole as crew? in everyone, and uh, so so we go off uh, looking for. And it's me and my my manager Chelly. We go off looking for uh, heartburn medicine. Right, right. So first thing that we think about doing is finding a pharmacy. Except for you know everything's in Dutch, so <laughs> we're just looking around. We found a grocery store, and we. Uh, we asked a gentleman in the grocery store for an acid, and he took us to pineapples. And we were like, no, not pineapples. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, he kind of gave up on us after pineapples. And uh, so we kind of were walking around ourselves looking for, like, a pharmacy section of this grocery store. We finally found one. And everything was in Dutch. So you, when when it comes to like medicines and things like that, you don't want to just take something. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So, uh, 
so we're trying we're trying to read the packages and like recognize like you know recognize some sort of word that is familiar or a illustration or something and we find this heartburn medicine and my manager is looking at it. He's like, I don't know, man. I'm like, come on, man. It's heartburn medicine. Look at look at the illustration on there. This guy's got his heartburn. <laughs> and uh, he was like, yeah, but I don't want to get it and have it also be like, you know, uh, a laxative or something. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so, but a lot of times, a lot of times we would uh, try and ask somebody for help and they, you know, sometimes they'd be willing to help. And then other times it was, it was just like, it's kind of like it is here with people that, you know, people looked at me like, why are you here if you don't speak the language? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, why are you disrespecting, you know, where I live? Right, right. And, uh, of course, you know, it wasn't like that. I didn't feel like I was disrespecting or anything like that. But uh, you could kind of you could kind of sense that from some people. Uh, but for the most part, uh, they were very... Uh, Especially on on my UK tour, they're very accommodating and made me feel right at home. And there was a lot of a lot of things that reminded me of home. So, how long were you over there for? I was over there for almost the whole month of August. Wow! How did you get off from work? Uh, I I, I kind of uh, asked work if I could have off because you know I had this big opportunity, and you know I've been working there for for ten years and. Uh, they kind of been following what what I've been doing, and it's not like, uh, you know, I'm not like making this stuff up. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's yeah, I'm going to Europe. Yeah, to, yeah right, uh, right. It's 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 yeah. document. It, it, my moves are documented. So everything that I two do, weeks later you show up and you're yeah. like, yeah, I um, I just came in to get some things. Yeah, yeah, like, right. What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, so they know they know I'm not like you know pulling their leg. Um, but they, uh, they kind of, I, I spoke, I spoke with my manager about it, and he said, "Listen, uh, for me to hold you back from from something like this would be, would be a terrible thing for me to do." He's like, "It's a once in a lifetime, once in a lifetime experience, you know, uh, to come your way, and I'm not going to be the one that holds you back from it. So absolutely, go. We'll we'll hold you down back here. We'll be here when you get back." And that was that was a there was a lot of love there because they didn't have to do that. And you know, this is a multi billion dollar company. I'm totally replaceable. But uh they like had me on their team and they uh they gave me all the support that I needed to to go and uh have that experience and, and man, it it changed my life. So I'm I'm really happy they allowed me to go. Well, I, I am too and uh so I mean, how many shows did you actually play while you were over there in Europe? I think I think we pay, played eighteen shows. I think we played wow, eighteen, so almost, uh, like every other day. You um, were... Yeah, pretty much, pretty much every day. Because the last couple of days, unless it, every day, unless it was like a travel day. Oh, okay. Which okay. a travel day pretty much, you know, pretty much takes all day to to get you know from one place to the next. Uh, that was that was the travel days are the most difficult thing about being on tour. You're rushing around, you know, you could potentially miss the train or miss the bus or miss the plane or, you know what I mean? There was, yeah, yeah. At, at one point. And you got commitments on the other end of that train Right, or exactly, bus or, exactly, or plane, exactly. So. so it's it's nerve wracking. You got to leave hours in advance. And if you're on tour, you know that, you know, your sleep schedule is already messed up. Or you're not trying to wake up extra early in the morning and things like that. There's so many things that are stressful about a, a travel day on tour. Right, right, right. Now, was it just you that were was on tour with your manager, or did you have like a bunch of other so it's, uh, uh, rappers with you? There, so the whole the whole reason for this tour is that I linked with uh, a producer from Chicago named Ridiculous. He produced a record for me called "Buy Me a Beer," and that record became it became one of my popular uh, records. And actually, I went on the the United States uh, the East Coast. Buy me a beer tour, but prior to going to Europe, but uh, yeah, I think I recall that they. Uh, so that producer's name is is ridiculous. So shouts out to ridiculous. Uh, he can't. He he was also booked on the tour. Uh, for the 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 UK the UK leg of the tour, uh, 
so we hit so he would do like a producer set before I would do my you know my set um which basically he he you know uh showcased his beats and and uh allowed MCs to rhyme over the beats it was really dope um he also has a uh an app called platforms with a z uh and you can and I'm so used to saying platforms with a z cuz that's what they said over there <laughs> but uh it's platforms with a z you can download it and and uh check out music from you know uh some really some really great uh underground talent including myself you can get all all my new music on on the platforms app so uh ridiculous really great guy and uh we kind of shared in that that tour experience even though we hadn't really we met each other once before that and then he he produced a record and so we didn't really know each other uh, but you know, we became best friends on tour because that's the way you got to do it on tour. Especially we're the only Americans. He's from Chicago. You know, we're from we're from here. So uh, we it, basically anytime something happened that was like askew or strange, all the Americans kind of looked at each other like, "Oh, that was not like America." <laughs> now I, I'm curious. Um, like, what's the metrics of going on tour, like to Europe? Right? Like, were you able to? break even or even make some money on tour no i mean i'm i i would to be quite honest i don't know exactly what was uh how that worked out like did you can't have to cover your own room or was that somebody no no i didn't no, i didn't i didn't have to pay for for uh for much of anything but um uh, at the same time like there was there was problems with the money uh situation this time there was things that we just didn't know that we had to learn while we were there mm. and uh you know fortunately we learned them it was too late we were also doing with exchange but rates and that's stuff like that, that was too. that was a big thing that was a, one of the one of the shockers you know you go there with money and then all of a sudden you have half the money that in britain well yeah in britain uh yeah but in europe with the euro it's i think the euro is actually a little weaker than the dollar yeah that's that's true we were going yeah we were going to to britain and uh so they, as soon as i got there they took half my money <laughs> so it was like you know what i mean it, it cost me money to just step on their soil um then then there so credit card fraud is is really big in the uk so almost no place takes your credit card. Really? And sometimes they'll ask you if it's an American credit card. And then they won't then they won't take it then. And or they won't take it unless it has one of those chips in it or you know what I mean? There's always a reason for them not to take your credit card. Wow. And uh so wasn't wasn't anticipating that. Um the the ATM stole stole you know, ate my, my manager's cash card. <laughs> So it's like here we are. We got all this merch and and like no money. So we had to sell the merch, and we did. We sold all the merch, and that That's was awesome. the that was the cash that that you know we had. Um, but by the end by the end of the tour, it was like we were running out. We were running out of cash. Um, we only had you know X amount. We kind of had to save some for uh, you know an emergency in case in case something were to happen. Um so basically when I, basically I say all that to say this. It's an investment. Oh yeah, oh definitely. And the next time that we go back is going to be much stronger. It's probably going to flip twice over um uh, in terms of and it just and that's just from experience in in the United States. Like I know the first time that I performed in Massachusetts like six people came to the show. Then the next time, like twelve people came to the show. But then the next time, like forty people came to the show. You know what I mean? It's just right, a way. Right. It's just a way that it works. You make more money as you as you go on and and build these relationships. Definitely. I mean, it's like that with most things that uh, you can do that aren't just uh, walking in and selling something that that has a purpose. Right. Um, you know, like a, a the need or, or fulfilling a need, a, you know, a need right there on the spot. So, um, so with with your album, what what kind of stuff have you did you do with your album now? Like, is it like what have you done? Did you do anything different from your last one? Your was your last was an EP. So yeah, so so basically, um, I'm with the DJ was more like boom bap, uh, 
raps, uh, you know, real DJ oriented uh, underground hip hop, basically. Right. Um, then I kind of evolved into the the sad songs, uh, studio, uh, live instrumentation, uh, a, a well produced EP, studio EP. Um, uh, more on the more on the pop side than the underground hip hop side, I would say. Uh, st- still, still hip hop though. With the everywhere man, I kind of combined the the two the two. So I uh, I kind of took elements of both um, the songwriting from sad songs combined with the you know the the rapidy raps of of I'm with the DJ and uh we even got uh you know some some dope DJs on there shouts out to my man DJ Soul Buck my man Jay Hart uh contributed to the project uh and really uh added that element that I really that I thought was important because it's where it's where I came from I think that the fans will will really appreciate this this project um just for just for the you know just the eclectic the eclecticness of it um it's different it's it's the evolution it's it's just the evolution of of you know me mm. from where I started till now no I, that's awesome i I'm just really looking forward to it you said september twenty eighth right september twenty eighth on soul spasm yes sir Awesome. Well, that that'll be on iTunes. That'll be on iTunes. It'll be on Amazon. It'll be everywhere, everywhere that you can think. You know, we got distribution <laughs> now. It'll be everywhere. The everywhere man is everywhere, as, as man. Title says yes. <laughs> uh, is it available for pre-order or? Do you it is. It, it actually is. It's available for pre-order on iTunes. Um, I would really encourage you to to please pre-order this project. Mm. Um, because that help it it just be if if for nothing else because it helps me out a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Climb uh, up the charts and and all right, that. Right. Right. And, and then it gets more exposure. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that you can get you know get more sales and then you can continue to pursue this dream and make more music for more people and and do all that and right. and sometimes people don't always see that they you know they see the money side of it and yeah uh, yeah they for, they forget that I'm actually like you know trying to make something with my life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it, it's important that uh, that that we try to support each other where, where and when we can, because that's that's you know, what what, what, are, what all, good is having friends and I being t- alive? Yeah, I, t- I tell people all the time, all, all all we got is us, and and it's one thing that I try not to, I try not to lose sight of, especially, uh, especially if someone were to to need my help with with something. Um, because it's easy, it's it, you know, it becomes easy to say no after a while, but you can't, you just can't. You have to you have to remember that this is a it's a perpetual thing. Like it's like uh, it goes back and forth. Um, all we got is us, and we need each other. So I I'd agree. Uh, there's there's plenty of uh, people that that don't want to necessarily support anybody doing anything because you know. I guess deep down, maybe they're jealous that they 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 aren't doing it. I don't know? even think it's so much. I don't even think it's so much that uh, as much as it's just like convenience and you know what I mean. People don't want to go out of their way. Right, right. No, that's very true. I, you know, sharing stuff on Facebook is tough, especially if it's something that they can't just view the video right in Facebook and it takes them out of Facebook. It's right, there's very tough to get people there's to go. A, there's a bunch of th- and 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 let's face it. I mean. You can't be everywhere at once. You can't do everything. You can't help everyone. So, so this much we understand. All, all I'm saying is that uh, we should always help when we can. Yeah. No. Definitely. Definitely. Um, what was I going to ask you the uh, the the other thing that uh, is going uh, was going on is. Um, you know, I've noticed that you're, you, you know, when you post these flyers up that, you know, you're doing this show and this show and this show, I, I've noticed that your name is getting closer and closer to the top. And in some cases being right at the top the, of, uh, the, of these bill of these uh, flyers for yeah, shows. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny how that, 
it's funny how that happens. Yeah, that uh, that happens. Yeah, and um, although it's not one of those things that I get lost in, uh, <laughs> some some artists some artists actually you know won't even do a show if they're not at the at the top of the bill or if they're not headlining the show or if their name isn't in in big I try I, I I really try not to pay too much attention to it because I never want to be that artist. I never want to be lost in that. I never want to look at a flyer and say, oh my, my name is too small on that flyer. Send it back. Call this person that designed it. This can't happen. <laughs> but uh <laughs> There's people like that in this world, you know. But but sometimes it sometimes it's warranted, right? It, it depends on like who you're playing against or playing with in the in the same show, right? Right. Like, that's so true. like if you know you two was showing up at the same show at the same festival that you were, like your name's not going to be at the top, right? Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> and if they got you two, there's probably acts that are just you know under just under you two and just under you right, know right. and under and under. So uh, you know it, it all it, it's all about perspective. You know, that's yeah. And that is that is very true. And and there's even uh, even even when I share uh, and, and, you know, this is quite often when I share bills with with my friends, we're not in competition like, oh, you know, <laughs> so and so's names before mine or is in a bigger font or, or whatever. Uh, although it is a good feeling when 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 you get when you get booked for a show and that flyer uh comes out and you see that you're, you know, headlining headlining the show or or you're, you know, you're one of the bigger artists that they're they're promoting being on the show. That's that's it's a really dope feeling. It's it's a uh it's a sense of accomplishment. It's because, you know, I I I've been not even they they used to not even put me on the flyer at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? They used yeah, to spell yeah. my name wrong. They used to put How Rick. Spell Rich Quick wrong. Rick Quick. Rick Quick. Yeah. <laughs> the the uh, the timeless way to get at me is call me Rick. But uh, yeah. So it's, you know these things these things aren't promised. So I'm I'm very grateful uh, for that. And it is something it is something that I have noticed like a change from years ago till now. Do you feel weight the weight of that? Like, like you're supposed now. Like, hey, my name's at the top of this. I need to promote more to because not. I mean, obviously, you, I understand what you just said about it. You trying not to let it affect you, but it does. You know, it does come with a certain weight, like a certain responsibility. Like, hey, my I'm, name's at the top of this. This is my name here. So if 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 ten people show up instead of a hundred, you know, it's like. Uh, you know, part of that, I feel, I would feel like it's on me. Um, no, I don't feel, I don't I mean, feel I know like there's it's promoters on, and yeah, stuff too. There, but. There's, there's promoters, at, at, you know, and I'm not a, I'm not a promoter. I'm an artist. Um, I do promote. I don't, uh, I don't lose any sleep over it though, because I can only promote what I can promote. I can only, you know what I mean? I know. Right, right. Uh, my fans know how to how to find out where where I'll be, and I have a, a great team of people that that promote. Also, um, I personally don't feel the pressure of that. However, I could I could see how how one would uh, feel that pressure, um, and it does it does have uh, there is a level of responsibility there. But like I said, I really don't like to get caught up in in the whole you know being at the top of a poster thing because that's such a little thing uh, in in the grand scheme of the game to be concerned about. I'm trying to you know I'm trying to be at the top of people's you know best rapper alive list, let alone <laughs> their their flyer for the show. Right, right, right. Well, it's it's all about the experience, and even if only ten people did show up, you give Yo, them these a great pictures experience. are killing me, bro. Oh, thank you, thank <laughs> you. They're, they're from uh, last December. Last December. Uh. <laughs> Every time one pops up, I keep I keep catching myself glancing over at them. <laughs> uh, so, has there been any new uh, disappointments or roadblocks that you've you've encountered? Um. 
aside, well, yeah, I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm coming out of uh, a. I was kind of lost there. I was kind of lost there for a little while, um, in terms of like I wasn't I wasn't churning out much creatively. Um, I wasn't going out on the scene myself, uh, aside from things that I was involved with. Uh, maybe I was being a little reclusive. Um, but I'm finally coming out of that, uh, taking better care of myself, uh, taking, uh, taking more, more things, uh, taking less for for granted in terms of of my fan base every once in a while you kind of like you know it goes up and down so sometimes you fall into a pit and you're not uh in the in the best place uh where you should be and i think i just came from one of those places now uh i'm i've been really focused on of course i basically what happened is i was about to go to europe and and you know it lit a fire up under me and uh, I had to. I knew that I was going to be in in full work mode once I was in Europe, and I, so I so I I go from I'm, I really wasn't doing anything, uh, and I say that loosely because I always continuously work. <laughs> well, I mean, you I, have an album coming out, so yeah, you had to have done well, that at I some had, point. Yeah, yeah, I had. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I did. That's basically what I did. But the, there was basically I wasn't doing much, and then uh, a few weeks prior to me going to. Europe, I was like, oh my God, I'm I'm about to go to Europe and I'm going to have to do all this work and I'm totally in chill mode. So I'm like, I got to get out of chill mode and uh, get back into work mode. So I, I called up everyone uh, and I'm like, listen, you know, whatever work you got for me, send it my way. I'll do it. If you're in the studio, call me up. I'll come. And, and I did that stuff every day for uh, almost two weeks. Every single day I was in the studio with somebody else. And that that really uh, got me going. I was like, yeah, I'm doing this. Then I went to Europe, and that inspired me on a whole other level. And then once I, once I came home, uh, you know, my best friend had got married. That inspired me on a whole other level. So <laughs> now now I'm like, I'm ready to go. And, and I'm promoting the album, so it's there's no better time to be in work mood than right right now when I should be working. So uh there there is and it might just be a personal thing. That there was a roadblock there for a little while and uh and I've actually I've seen you several times during the course of that that roadblock. I'm sure you didn't notice, but uh it's just I think it's insp- it's probably inspiration. I was feeling uninspired and then Sometimes, in order to be inspired, you gotta look for the inspiration, and that's what I did. Uh, I knew that that once I went to Europe, things were gonna change for me. But I kind of had to gear myself up to be in that experience, whereas I could tackle that experience uh, in the right way. Right. Yeah. No. I, I I totally understand about the going from work mode to not work mode, um, and trying to um balance the two so you don't get burned out either when you're in work mode and um yeah because you could do things for a day or two or three but then after like the fourth or fifth day it starts to you know it starts to wear on you a little bit i'm the i'm the king i'm the king of getting burnt out which i really don't get i really don't get burnt out i go crazy insane (laughs) and they check me into a hospital but I can't figure at this point in my life. I'm not sure if I like that or not. Like it doesn't sound like a, like a fun thing to to lose your mind. But when I do, when it happens, I know that I had just released a banging project and people love it, and they got me running around all crazy doing all sorts of crazy things. <laughs> so it's it, you know what I mean. It's like it's like a a weird a weird kind of uh, a weird kind of feeling uh, because every every time I release a project. You know, it seems I lose my mind. You know, didn't didn't lose my mind yet, but uh, there's something there's something about this game, Joe, that I love, man. I just love it. I keep doing it. I keep going right back. That's true. So, well, speaking of, of 
things that you love, what would you, what was a recent favorite memory for you since uh, since we last saw each other, which was like what was it the the one year anniversary show back in April or I don't even know when my one year anniversary show was. Nah, I think, I think that was uh, was it April? A- April fifteenth, April eighteenth. I don't know something. I think it was April. Wow. May? Maybe it was May. I don't. Know. I don't know. I should probably well, know this. <laughs> um, that I calendar. mean that th- that uh, one year anniversary show was a was a uh, a happy a happy memory for me. Honestly, um, it just was that was a that was a feel good that was a feel good night. It was might have been was. the margaritas, <laughs> but uh, that was just that was so much fun. There was a lot of love in the building. Um, so that's that's actually one of my happy ha- happy memories uh, in 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 recent memory. Um, the obviously going to Europe and 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 uh, talking to my fans out there. Uh, Talking to the rap fans in general out there, and they they mentioned you know uh, artists that I know personally as as you know artists that they listen to. That was really dope. Oh wow! Um, because I you know I could come home and and tell those people, and it's like yo they were talk they were talking about you in in Europe, and uh, so that made me happy. D- there's so I, there's so much to be to be thankful for right now, and and uh, it's hard for me to 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 think of any one happy thought or or memory. It just uh, I'm in a really good space right now. So, is there there any last thoughts uh, you'd like to share, like or uh, you know, they the things that you you've come to realize. Um. I'm still I'm still on the on the follow your dream wave. This is <laughs> Dreamers Podcast after all. Um I'm still doing it. And I think that it's inspiring to a lot of people and I, and I'm and I'm sure that 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 you've heard this recently also with with the book and and uh you know the successes of everything else when when you pursue your dreams, it inspires people to pursue their dreams. And there's a lot of people that, that told me like, you know, before, before I saw you did this or you did that, I didn't even think that it was a possibility for me to do it. And then, you know, I went out and did it. So I want to keep, uh, inspiring people to, to do these things. Why not? We're only, you know, we're only here for a certain period of time. So we can get in in somebody's box and stay there or we could go out and you know, be free. This is our life. That's a, that's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we only get so many hours uh in a day and a week and a year. Right. And so many years. So uh, you know, you don't know what what's going to come of it, and and th- you need to make the most of it. Doesn't mean you got to go jump out of a plane today, but no. uh, it does mean that you need to spend time and figure out what it is that they you know, makes you tick and what makes you happy. And even if it's not to you know make it um you know your career or whatever, to just do you know figure out what it is because there's a lot of people out there that don't. They just check in check out check in check out and uh, sometimes and... sometimes it's not even always about uh sometimes people feel that the things that they do are just insignificant because it's a big world out there but as long as it's important to you first off it's important to somebody else if it's important to you you represent a certain percentage of the world right um uh, People forget that also, but uh, if it's if it's going to make you happy, you should do it. If it's going to make other people happy, you should do it. Why? What? Because uh, otherwise, what is the point? Like, I would hate to think that I was put here on this planet to mix paint for the Home Depot. Although the Home Depot needs somebody to mix paint for them. That's that's you true. know what I mean. But I would hate I would hate to think that that's that's my whole life's purpose. Like that's that's what I'm here to do. Um, so I, so I shoot for more and I try to do other things. 
I would I would encourage you know other people to do the same, and just just like what 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 you're doing with the with the with the podcast and with the book and and raising money, uh, more people need to need to do these things uh, because. Because they can, because it's totally possible, and and you know it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. It does, and and sometimes you you have to uh, not get lost in the idea of like, okay, if it affects just one or two people, you know, what's the effect of that? Um, because you know sometimes we, we we get lost in the idea. Well, you know, if I can't affect thousands and tens yeah, of thousands yeah. of See, people, it's, like, it's not well, even it's not worth it. Yeah, that's and it's so it's so worth it to help one person. Even even when I think about myself, like there was there was people that that helped me and I'm one I'm one person. Now I'm in a position where I can help a lot of people. But when when I got help from people, I wasn't helping nobody. So it was just one one person that that you're affecting. But what you wound up doing is helped a lot of people because, you know, it it, it carries it, on. Yeah, it amplified their message um, right. through you to other people. You know, the message of uh, go and do it, and and you know, any help that I can give you in any way, I can give it to you. It you it know, carries it on. Works. Yeah, definitely. So uh, so I would love for you to plug your websites and your album one more time so that uh, people can go get it. September 28th on Soul Spasm. You can, you can get The Everywhere Man by Rich Quick, that's me, on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, uh, you know, any of these, these things these kids are using. I don't know what they are. But you can get, you can get The Everywhere Man, Everywhere Man. And uh, my website is www.richmfnquick.com. You can find me on all of my social networks at richmfnquick. I'm on all of them, Joe. All the social networks. Several <laughs> Periscope. I don't got a Periscope yet. Why not, man? I should be Periscoping right now. You, oh, oh, you got, you got, you got the Periscope. Yeah, I don't use it all that often. But I don't I do use the, I don't use the Periscope. People keep telling me about it though. I might have to hop on. I'm a Vine guy. I like Vine. Well, you use Twitter, right? I do use Twitter. So you just log in with your Twitter account, and it just posts right to Twitter. Really? Yeah. So it's it's more like an add-on than a social network per se. I might have to check out the Periscope. Vine so is cool though. I might be on Periscope soon. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Vine is my favorite. Oh, I got a new one. I got yo. I got this. I got this new one called. I, I'm not going to get too deep into. It. I got this new one called Photo, and it's like gifts. Check this out, bro. Look, it's like gifts. Everything is a gift. It's like Instagram. Oh wow. But gifts, huh? That's pretty cool. Yeah, so cool. So it's pretty awesome. So anyway, yeah. So you can give me, you can find me on photo too if you got photo, which you don't, you don't have it. But if you did, <laughs> You're right, I I'm don't. on there. <laughs> All right, Rich. Well, I I really appreciate you taking the time. Oh, to, to always come a pleasure, here man. Thanks for having in me. The studio and everything, and uh, to to talk about the album and all, and and uh, I'm sure I'll have you on again, real soon. Absolutely. You know, you know, I'm I'm gonna come back, and and uh, hopefully when I come back, it's it's uh, margaritas and uh, tacos and chili and all all that like it was last time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would uh, I I would highly suspect that it will be. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs>